Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. It is 7.08, Friday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, in case you haven't been listening all morning and didn't figure that out by now. 63 degrees, getting up to 70. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio. Streaming live on the Radio Pup app and WOBMAM.com. Uh, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. One quick uh, point. If you're interested in learning more about the listening room uh, on Sunday at 6 uh, at six p.m., uh, listening room, please search the listening room on Facebook and learn more. It really is a great evening in downtown Tom's River and should kind of give you a vision of what you, we would love downtown Tom's River to feel like every night of the week. Uh, so uh, we turn our attention now to a very special guest for me. Uh, we are joined by uh, John Busco. Uh, Morgan Stanley and John, I, uh, you know, good morning. First of all, good morning to you. Uh, so, so first of all, I have to say, uh, you are the first. This is the first. You are the first. Well, there's a number of firsts actually for you. You are the first radio guest I've ever had, who I've bought a house from. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John, John was the previous owner of my house, and so, uh, so it's really it is a good lesson for all of you. Like you know, unlike Donald Trump. John and I actually made a deal, and look, we still talk to each other. That's right. Right, so that's uh, that's different than most of the folks that Donald Trump doesn't deal with. See what I did there? Yeah. Anyway, John, so why don't you tell folks a little bit about yourself, how you started your business, etc. Uh, Jeremy, good morning. Um, this is so much fun to be here. I I grew up in the Bronx, uh, New York. I was uh, an athlete in my former life. I'm 63 now, so it was a long time ago. At a high school, I had a choice to either go to the University of Lehigh and play football and baseball, but I was a uh, second-round draft pick with the New York Mets, and my family wanted me to go down that path. So I decided to uh, take the bonus money and became a professional baseball player. I stayed in the Met organization for five years, and then I was fortunate enough to uh, begin a career at EF Hutton in their training program. and. The rest is history. Wow. So okay. So wait a second. We can't get off the because that's the other thing. You're you're also I think, I think you're our first uh, professional. You know, former professional athlete, right? Yeah. And uh, and by the way, at 63, let me just tell you something. I I am I am 20 years, 21 years your junior, and I'm fairly certain that in a cage match you would <laughs> knock the heck out of me. And I'm, I'm I am 100 percent certain that in a hundred yard dash I'd be 50 yards behind you. I'm yeah, just well, saying. Well, the older I get, the better I was. Well, wow, that's was great. Saying. That's great, John. You're supposed to say, by the way, no, that's not true, Jeremy. <laughs> that's you're, not you're true. Jeremy. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you out with that. So, okay, so so did you? Um, so you you were with the Mets, and so what were the years you were in the Mets organization? I was drafted in 1971. Okay. I played uh, up to AAA until 1975. And unfortunately, I was born before Kurt Flood because there was no free agency. Right. So it was a real job back then. Right. The average big league salary was $18,000 a year. And I felt as if I should have been in the big leagues, but I wasn't. And I decided to... uh, Change course. Do you ever have any regrets there? Like maybe you should have stuck it out for another couple of years and seen what happened or no? My only regret was I wish I was born about 10 years later. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a phenomenal experience. I was taught by uh, great guys who were in the Hall of Fame, Whitey Herzog, Chuck Killer, Chuck Estrada, just just great people. Right. And so last year you must have been pretty happy when they, uh, you know, they had a pretty good run there, right? Uh, well, the Met, the Met organization went downhill after they lost Whitey, but right. it seems like they, uh, they 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 found their way. They have yeah. something which is golden, which is called pitching. Yes, lots of pitching. Yeah, I actually made it to an NLCS game last year, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm not a Met fan; I'm a Yankee fan. But you know, I'm, I I switch bandwagons whenever uh, you know whenever a team's moving along through the playoffs. So uh, so there you go. Uh, well, listen, so that's very cool. Okay, so so why don't you talk to us a little bit? about what you what you do now um, with uh, with Morgan Stanley uh, <clears throat> I work in the wealth management division of the firm uh, this is my 40th year of being in this uh, industry we work you know our community is is uh, more mature it's older so we serve people from 55 to 100 uh, so we work 
uh, doing financial planning for individuals. But another side component of the work I do, which we started about 15 years ago, is we go out and we manage the money or we help manage the money for adult communities. The 55 and older um, uh, community uh, business is in New Jersey is just uh, growing like crazy. Uh, there is a huge secular movement for people to move into 55 and old communities. And so we go out and we compete uh, with, uh, when we speak to the board and the property managers, and we help them to manage the money. So those are the two components of the work I do. Okay. And I know also, so in your, uh, in, in your work there, I know you've also become uh, really a strong advocate for, uh, you know, for helping to improve quality of life in, in those communities as well. I know you've been for example, I know that you've been working, uh, you've been working with uh, Barnabas a little bit to uh, to 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 improve healthcare in one of those communities, right? Because it's something that you feel is important there. Well, there is a community, uh, original Leisure Village, uh, which is probably one of the oldest in the state, right? May, may, maybe one of the oldest in the country, and they have a very unique uh, facility on site, which is called their healthcare facility. And I don't know of any other adult community that has 16 nurses on staff. Right. So, yeah, that needs to be saved. Uh, so we've, we've been doing our best to raise money for them uh, to keep that facility open. Yeah, and that's great. So I think, you know, so it's, look, it's one thing to, to you know, to do something like that professionally and to make your living there, but also to kind of see a need in a community and go out and say, listen, I can, I can help make a difference. And, uh, and I see the value in this and, you know, and maybe, you know, you're 63 years old and you're thinking maybe in a couple of years, I may, you know, I may need that. So maybe I'll, that's you know. true. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, maybe you're just planning for your, for your future because that's what you do, right? That's right. You that's plan, you, you plan for the future. And I have to tell you our, um, our seniors ever since the financial crisis of 2008, I've really had a hard time because the government's hand has been squarely in the market of interest rates, and interest rates are essentially still zero. Right. So there's not a lot of there's not enough capital that people can have to make a fair living with interest rates at zero. Right. Yeah, it's hard to live off the interest when there is none. That's right. Right. Yeah. That's because uh, it used to be that used to be the old uh, the old deal, right? You said, listen, if I had if I had uh, X amount of dollars, and I know I'm going to make I know I'm going to make six or seven percent interest on it every year. I know what my, you know, what what my what my revenue stream is going to be if I add that to my Social Security, et cetera, et cetera. I know I'm going to make X amount of dollars, and I can I can make it happen. That's right, and, and, and it doesn't work like that anymore. Well, no, and it's forced people to come out of their comfort zone because they now have to take more risk in order to achieve some return, and uh, that's the rub. Right, right. Interesting, interesting, and I, I don't think people, you know, I think we. I think a lot of folks look at interest rates and they look at interest rates and they say this is a great thing because look I can get I can get a low interest mortgage I can borrow money at a at a lower rate I can do business you know I can do business more cheaply right uh, better for the housing market theoretically et cetera et cetera but I don't necessarily know how many folks look at it from the back end right and say gosh you know you're right this is it's it's turned into it's turned into a world where you kind of need to invest in more what what really is inherently more risk, uh, and uh, and if you're 70 years old and on a fixed income, uh, that's not necessarily the most comfortable place to be. No, and look what they've done in Europe. Yeah, they had negative interest rates. So uh, you put your money in a bank in Germany for five years, and you give the bank 50 basis points. But you're right, low interest rates have really helped uh, consumers buy cars, uh, buy houses, uh, but it really has made the wealthier a heck of a lot more wealthy right. because they're able to take advantage of it. Right. This is where we go into our Bernie Sanders pitch, but we're going to move along. Uh, you know, when we get back, because we're up against a break, uh, I do want to, we would like to talk about why you picked the Jersey Shore, right? And uh, and and talk about a little bit about, you know, being in business at the Jersey Shore because you've, you've been here for, for a few years now. So I feel like you could talk with some degree of uh, of, of, uh, of authority on this particular topic. Absolutely. Cool. We're here with John Busco, Morgan Stanley. Be right back after this. Everything you need to know about the Jersey Shore. This is Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBMAM 1160 and 1310. 
Now, back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 and WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. We are here with John Busco, uh, Morgan Stanley. So, John, why did you pick the Jersey Shore to, to start a business? Uh, this was an accident. I received my bonus from the Mets. It was about $40,000, which in 1971 was a lot of money. Right. And I saw an advertisement in the New York Post for a condominium development in, uh, built by Calvin and Broad in Lakewood called Coventry Square. And I drove down and I bought it. And okay. I, and I, that's how I got here. Really? You're just like, that was it? Yeah, that was it. I needed a place to live. I needed a place to live in the off season. And I kind of wanted to get away from my family a little bit. Very possessive Italian family. We had right. a four family house. So my mother had dedicated one of the apartments for me. And when I moved down here, she didn't talk to me for three years. You know, so. Really? Yeah. She thought I moved to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you started a family at the Jersey Shore? Yes. So how, how many kids do you have, John? Uh, we have five uh, children and seven grandchildren. Wow. Wow. So that's uh, so that, that even keeps you busy now, right? The grandchildren. Oh, the grandchildren are fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, my kids are fantastic. They all live in Tom's River. Uh, they, uh, my daughter actually was a teacher at Tom's River North, and she's now an English uh, supervisor uh, at Manalapan. Uh, three of my boys graduated from high school south, and two graduated from high school east. Wow. So, so and, and I know that you were very active with them, um, you know, even as, uh, even as a coach and, uh, and kind of uh, giving back. We, you know, we talked about how you're giving back to the community kind of in your professional life. But also, uh, you were you've been very giving from a uh, from a uh, you know helping out from a coaching team standpoint, giving giving your passing along your uh, your abilities and your knowledge of professional sports kind of on to the next generations. Uh, yeah, I'm very critical of coaching because I was taught by great people, and I believe a great coach, like a great teacher, could shape someone's life and help really change their life. Um, my wife has been asking me to get involved with T-ball, which I just can't do. I think these guys are saints. So right. the age group that I really enjoy is like 13 to 15. Right. Yeah. I've been coaching for about 30 years in, in the town. Right. And you coached at, uh, you coached at Donovan also, right? I was asked to coach one year there. I, I did the JV team back in, uh, 2013. Okay. And 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 you're saying, and you're saying thirteen to uh, thirteen to fifteen. Uh, you know, it's funny you say that. I have a so I have a uh, my daughter will be thirteen actually this weekend, um, and I coach her soccer team, uh, and my son uh, will be fifteen in two months, and so that's just the age that you feel like they're kind of. They're kind of maturing a little bit. They kind of understand what you're saying to them. They can kind of start to put, the, I assume they can kind of start to put the pieces together of how what they're doing today relates to tomorrow. Um, and uh, and you can really see that impact, right? Yeah. I, I love watching them compete. And when they start to get into that age, um, the input you give them, and the one-on-one -on -one and the mentoring you, you give them, and the, and the empowerment and the encouragement that you give them, is critically critically important right right well that's uh listen i'm with you 100 percent. i think uh and i think coaching is really the the unsung volunteers in our community because the hours you put in the you know the impact to your point that you have on on our youth and frankly the amount that you deal with parents and the the amount of like thankless stuff you deal with uh, it's beyond just about any other uh, any other volunteer position or actually paid position that's out there, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, we are here with John Busco, Morgan Stanley. Uh, we are going to be back with him to talk more. Of course, we got to give him his magic wand, uh, find out about his aha moment, uh, and, uh, and so much more. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin back after this. The news never stops at WOBMAM.com. Get the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Gronin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 at 1310. 
Live from the Jersey Shore to the world. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. 735, Friday, April 1st. 63 degrees, getting up to 70 today. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160 if you want to join the conversation. We are here with John Busco, Morgan Stanley. So, John, uh, talk to me. What is the best? What do you find to be the best part of doing business at the Jersey Shore? Oh, just the uh, just the environment. Uh, every time I go into the city, I am so thankful that I'm only three miles from my house. I have the opportunity to uh, to enjoy this lifestyle. Uh, I work with my wife, uh, so it's just. Um, it's a pleasure. It's comfortable. I work for a world-class organization uh, three miles from my house, which is pretty good. Yeah, that you can't really argue with that, right? No. The commute, you know. The so, commute's good. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, you know, you don't, you don't listen to me on the commute, I guess, in the morning. No, right? <laughs> no I listen yeah. to Bloomberg. I'm uh, sorry, John. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> I understand. I mean, he's got – he may, maybe he has a little bigger resume than me, but whatever. Okay. Uh uh, so, so what do you think, though? So, so we've been talking a lot this morning about the Jersey Shore and businesses. So, so what do you think? How do you think we would get business down to the Jersey Shore? Uh, I believe as as companies become uh, much more mobile, where the physical plant is really not as important, because even in our uh, industry, we have a lot of mobility. I believe once people have the chance to experience uh, the shore, the lifestyle, what it what it has to offer. Uh, that's a natural draw. I right. mean, in my own life, some of our best family experiences have been from the shore. And as a consequence of that, a lot of my family has, has migrated here. So uh, I believe the same is true for business. Right. Uh, that's great. So, so uh, what was your aha moment uh, where you kind of realized that, uh, that you kind of had a solution to an issue? Like, so, so I'm, just, I'm just picturing it and I'm like, you know, here you are, you're, you're making your way, you know, hopefully to the major leagues in baseball. And that's, I assume as a, as a younger guy, that's kind of where your headset is at. Like you're going to make this happen and this is going to be your career and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be the next uh, star. You're going to be a 300 hitter. And, you know, and that's, and then, and then when you retire, you're going to have to figure out what speaking engagements to take and, and, you know, and, and what endorsement deals to take. So then, then you kind of uh, have that realization that says, okay, well, maybe this isn't going exactly like I had thought. So what is that aha moment that says, listen, I, I could do something else? Look, I put the time in. I felt I should have been where I was, and I wasn't. And I made a big boy decision right? and decided to uh, change paths. I was fortunate to get into the training program at EF Hutton. And what was really an aha moment for me there as a trainee is uh, before Macy's was Macy's, uh, we had Bamberger's here. And uh, we created a program which was called uh, uh, E.F. Hutton Talks to Women About Money, which really resonates even today. And we brought that message to uh, just about every Bamberger's in the state of New Jersey. And that really started my career uh, really pretty quickly uh, with E.F. Hutton. So, so my aha moment there was E.F. Hutton Talks to Women About Money. Right. Uh, and that's that's great. Uh, and so now we ask the big one, right? So the magic wand. So if you had the magic wand, uh, what's the one thing you would change or do differently in your sector? Uh, well, I believe we need to educate more. Um, financial information is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I believe most people feel that information uh, is knowledge. Informa that, that, that information is really not wisdom. It's simply uh, information. Now, we don't sell a product. We really uh, build relationships. And I feel that our firm should do a better job of seeing people more holistically. Um, and, and, and that's where we need to be, educate and see people more holistically. Right. So, you know, it's funny. It's, uh, it's you know, we talked a little bit about coaching before, and that was – you know, that played a big part of your life as, as you, you know, certainly with your kids. Um, and uh, and really kind of what you do now 
is in its own way, it's coaching again, right? I mean, you're still coaching. This is, uh, to use your words, uh, this is really coaching for big boys and big girls, right, is what you do. Uh, we, uh, life coach. Right. Uh, we And, you know, my kids have given me a very, very unique perspective is because you can't treat everybody the same way. You can't paint everybody with a broad brush. Right. Everyone is very different. Your dreams and goals are different from somebody else's. And we have two ears and one mouth, and we should use them that way. Wow. Oh, that, that's uh... – You've used that line before, right? I have. Yeah, you may have. You may have. You may have said that. I can. I, I'm just picturing like some 13 year old girl somewhere playing a sport and saying that. I could just picture how that might work. Uh, John Busco, John, where could folks uh, uh, learn more? Maybe contact you, or maybe find out. Uh, you know how you can maybe give them some of that life coaching advice. Uh, thank you. Just go to Google. Google my name, uh, John J O H M B U S C O. It will link to my website. You could shoot me an email, give me a call. I'm at work normally 6.30 in the morning, leave leave 4.30. Nice. 6.30 to 4.30, huh? Yeah, Saturday and Sunday. You know, money money knows no time off. Is that, 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 that that's Listen, so I've heard. So I've heard. John Busco, Morgan Stanley. Uh, John, thank you so much uh, for, for joining us this morning. And, and like I've said, John and I are uh, inextricably bound because as long as he is in uh, – he, as long as he's in Ocean County in New Jersey, uh, he's the uh, the the homeowner before me at my current address. So uh, so, and I know where he lives. So I could just pop by and say, John, I don't, I still, I still can't find the light switch for this light in the room. And by the way, that actually has happened. Yes. John, thank you so much. You have a fantastic weekend, Jeremy. Okay? Thank you very much. This was so much fun. All thank right, you. cool. Back with more. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin after this.